Try something really quick just to see what he would do. Well, he remembers that. That's good. Good. That's better. Good job, bud. Good. Break. Good boy. So my game plan here for just session two is to simply just, I mean, we're already picking up right where we left off, which is good. That means he learned something last time and he's, he's, he has enough cognitive abilities to remember what we're doing. Um, the only thing right now that he's doing is he's just doing that vocal little spiking bark. I think a lot of that is just suspicion. I call it suspicion. He's basically unsure of what's that? Why are you moving? I didn't say you could do this. I didn't say you can do that. But again, I think it's just that hybrid between him going, I don't know what you're going to do. And also, I don't know. I don't want you to do anything. Right. So being a brat and being fearful at the same time. So I'm just going to continue to work him on the box, just getting him to do new things. I may bring out some other uh, cots to get him to do alternative place commands and then hopefully we can continue to do some obedience and get him to take some food from us and uh, be able to work on obedience with him. Okay. Place. Good. Sit. Good. So I'm just going to give him a little correction for that. Just a little pop in that martingale just to pop him. Um, when he does the little bark. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Good. And have you guys just ignore him because I know last time he was really trying to hit home base a lot to check in with you guys, and I want to take that away from him so he focuses more on me and the task at hand. Place. Good boy. Nichols, sit. I know. Sit. Good. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to try to desensitize him because every time he's kind of like a Harley Davidson, every time I do this, he, he, he reacts. So it's like twisting the throttle every single time. So what I want to do is just this popped in my head is I want to desensitize him. Pot, this might work. It might not. But I want to desensitize him to the leash. And I'm just going to I'm just going to sit there and do this for a little bit. And these aren't corrections because it's just a martingale. So it's more just like tapping him so it's not constricting him to a point of correction but it's it's more just a an attention getter but that's his big problem right now is every time i tap him with this collar that's when he's barking so i'm just going to keep pa pop popping this in a non-corrective way just like this do you see to desensitize him to the leash because that's when he has his big freak outs is when we sit like this go stagnant and then boom he reacts so I'm just going to keep doing this for a little bit to get him used to this collar pressure a little bit more. Again, without giving him any aversive corrections. Good boy. Good. So I'm just kind of just jiggling the handle around a little bit. Good job, bud. Good boy. He's like, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> Good. 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 Yes. Good job. So that worked because every other time... Other than that one, he he kind of came at me like, where are we going? Break. That was good. Good. Good job, buddy. All right, so me moving away from him also creates conflict. I'm going to stay right in this alley right here, T. Good. So I'm going to desensitize that as I continue to de desensitize the leash. Good. He's going to desensitize him moving backwards. Good. Got a little, little growly there. I want to try something really quick just to see what he would do. So just bring something to the table. Thing about that, two two things is I want to see 
why we're, why we're getting the bark as much as we are. A new object makes him that. He, he does, does it at home too. Yep. So again, it's kind of the same thing as like this in the first. That in the first session was pretty much me. <laughs> so I, I was try, I'm trying to do two things. I'm trying to figure out his intentions of how far he would go, and he's very fearful. So he, I don't think he ever would actually bite me which is why I pushed him just a little bit, just to see if he'd nip me. And he, he was like doing this. That's one thing. And I also wanted to just see how, how much of his barking is actually the suspicion versus brattiness. And it's a lot more suspicious because as soon as I brought that out, that's where he really fired up. So I'm just testing him a little bit and I'm gonna help him. I mean, you could do this with anything, the piece of paper, anything that he's unsure of, he just takes a little bit of time to get comfortable with. Come on, Nichols. Yes, good boy. Good boy, come on. All we're gonna do is we're gonna take our time around this. It seems silly, and it, it I mean, to us it is. And um, So we're just gonna take our time around this, and then we're, gonna, we're just gonna get him closer and closer until he gets more comfortable with it. All right. All right, come on. Come on. Yay, good boy. Sit. Nope. Good boy. Good boy. Good job. Good job. Come on. Good man. I know. It's really scary. It's really scary. Come on. Place, 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 place. Yay. Good boy. Are we okay with this? No? All right. Is that going to be okay? Is that gonna be okay? Good. Good. Come on. Good boy. Huh. Okay. I'm not. I'm not giving him any opportunity. I'm just like, well, let's do it. Cause, he, good boy. Good job. Yeah, buddy. A little nervous. That's okay. Nice. Nice, buddy. Go ahead. Yes. Good boy, Nichols. Good man. Good man. Zach, you want to grab me one of the fake dogs out of the thing, please? And it just takes a lot of patience and... Good man. Come on. Just trying to get his, this is all just a big puzzle for him and I. It's the reactivity that's making things not, I'll do it, which is good. I mean, it's a very fear-based thing, mix. He's got a lot of like conflicting compartments going on in this behavior where it is fear-based that like little, he's kind of just like slow mo, like he doesn't want to do it. He just doesn't know what else to do, but he's also hurting because that's, He's an Aussie, so it makes sense nice. to... I want to see how he acts without you guys in the room. So I just want to evaluate his behavior without the owners. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm gonna take all the things he's afraid of, basically just put him at this gate. So I'm taking what he loves and what he hates and combining them together to make him a more confident dog. Try to anyway. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting, I'm just trying to build his confidence by putting all the things that he's 
afraid of and then putting it at the threshold or the portal that he wants to get to the uh thanks wants to get to the most to help him desensitize to some of these meaningless objects that he's afraid of and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to take it a step further so a lot less vocal without his parents and I don't, I don't know how he's going to be. I'm just explaining out loud what I'm seeing. And this is, I mean, this is leash pressure, but he doesn't know leash pressure. And I can't really teach him leash pressure in this state of mind. And so a couple people were asking with this particular case, wouldn't it make the most sense to teach him the foundations of leash pressure? Yes, it would make the most sense, but he's in such a state of mind where he's not gonna, he, he can hardly learn how to take food. There's no way I'm going to be able to teach him the principles of a pressure release escape training scenario. He can't think clearly. So you have to deal with this as it comes. You can't, you can't go to the textbook and say, you get an insecure dog who's terrible on a leash. Let's teach him the principles of leash pressure and put him against the wall and teach him how to escape pressure up and down my body. It's not going to work with a dog like this. You just have to try to get creative and dig into different things to help the dog out with what you're dealing at that time. So again, I'm putting on all the stuff he was at first very afraid of and kind of cheating. And I've never done this before. I'm just doing it because it's what is popping in my head right now. Oh, remember you were terrified of that? Yeah, a little bit, huh, bud? Good. Good. <laughs> Now I can start doing a little bit of just pressure in general. Desensitizing, he's smelling all these things, but I'm also using my body to block his threshold of what he wants, which is the door. I wanna see how his behavior does when the owners come back in. Cause then if he turns and freaks out on everything right here, that tells us the significant variable. Doesn't necessarily mean it's their fault. It just means that they are the variable of why he's as reactive as he is. Cause if you're noticing, He's so less vocal without them in the room. He has, he, he's not really barking as much as he normally would. Go ahead, just come over here. I'm gonna make you a threshold, so just stand with your, just spread out a little bit, good. Just stand like this, but face me, good. Don't try this at home, kids. Good. So what I really need with, to do with this dog to make things significantly better at the fastest, most efficient pace is to simply just do a board and train with him to get him for at least two weeks to work with him. So that way he's not constantly fight or flighting to try to find his parents. So again, um, I know he's, I know he's going to bash through those, those animals, but what it does is it, it tells me and it gives me feedback that he's not necessarily terrified of those animals or those objects because he's going barging right through them. So for whatever reason, when the owners come back into play and he turns back on the animals, it just gives us one more piece of information to the puzzle that we're trying to figure out. Come here, bud. Good job. Good job, buddy. Good job, Nichols. Still a little suspicious, but for him to just wheel on that, uh, 30 foot line and to come this close to me is, is pretty good for him. And then we're gonna to try to recall him back because again, that would be ideal. Oh, just teach him leash pressure and recall him back. It's a little hard when he's that obsessed with his owners and he he's so dependent on them for security. But I'm gonna try. Nichols, come on. Come on. Good man, come on. <laughs> come on. You got it, dude. <laughs> Good boy! Good job, big man! Good man! Good man! That was very good. Taking a treat from my hand. It's another first. Hey, let's get used to that. Good boy. That was good. Nichols, come. Good boy! What a good job you are doing. So good boy. Good job. Moving my body around a lot, a lot better than I've ever done before with them, so this is good. Hey, good, good. 
So again, he's a young dog and he doesn't have a lot of or any obedience with him. So it's hard for me to correct him for not recalling, correct him or punish him for not sitting. Um, but he's making behavioral mental progression, which is more important than structured traditional obedience because that stuff's the easy stuff we can do in the future. So over the last, like, I don't know, 10 minutes they've been gone, I think he's maybe barked two or three times. And that's a significant difference between when the owners were present. So as a dog person, the, the, the best thing to do is play investigator. What variables make other variables react? What can we take away to, to make things better? So if we, don't, if we wanna minimize reactivity, stubbornness, and barking, then we put the owners away and then all of that decreased. So that's where we can I identify and compartmentalize exactly what's making him react the most. And now this is a dog that I can work with, with basic obedience and multiple other things and avenues to progress him as a dog. But it's very clear, as I mentioned 478,000 times, that the owners are probably what's setting this off. Now, like I said before, it's not fair to blame the owners to say they've messed the dog up and this is where he's at. There's a lot of different things that go into it that make this situation the way it is. So now what I wanna do is bring them back in and then see how he reacts with them coming back in. Like Good boy, good boy. But again, now like you see when he comes up, he's, in, he's, he's looking for something. Where, bef like I said before, it's like Rap. And then he's fighting, 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 release. Rap. And so it's a very non-traditional way to work with him, but he's the type of dog that if you were to like not give him any pressure and not give him any physical like, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. What I'm doing is I'm just putting oil on that wheel and I'm just making it just a lot more fluid, a lot more faster. Right? In my head, I'm thinking of it like, just like loosening up that jar that's really tight. Like each session, we're just gonna keep getting looser and looser and he's just gonna get more fluid with things because even on his face you can tell he's a lot less panicked and stressed you can see it in his face where he's like whatever where before it was and we're going to still see those little signs of freak outs but it's going to be way less than we were and even like when i do this and he complies to me without me dragging him in like before it's progression you guys have any questions on this Okay, cool.